Hi everyone. This is the second practice problem for section 5.2. And this is a lot like the first practice problem, except for this point, this time we're going to use a left endpoint Riemann sum. Uh, again, this was a multiple choice question in Newton, but I'm just going to solve it. So um, by definition, our left endpoint Riemann sum is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of f sub x sub i minus 1 times delta x. So like I did before, I want to imagine that this is our x-axis, and we are evaluating this integral over the interval from 0 to 7. And we're going to partition this up into n rectangles. So I'm just going to make a couple here and then do my dot, 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 so that I get my n rectangles. So this is x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, and so on, all the way up, up to x sub n. And remember, the, the i's are the subscripts. So this is i equal to 0, i equal to 1, and so on, all the way up to i equal to n. So I want you to see that if we take some, some um, sub-interval, that if this is x sub i, then, let me move my dots here, then this is x sub i minus 1, which means that, and that's why with this left endpoint, that's why we're using an x sub i minus 1. So um, just for example, when you're looking at this first rectangle right here, um, we want the leftmost side. So if, if i equals 1, then the leftmost side is, I, is x sub i minus 1, which would be x sub 0. So we're getting this left side. Um, when i equals n, then the leftmost side is x sub n minus 1. Um, so remember that also that the width of our rectangles here is delta x. And to find the width of the rectangles, we take the entire length of the interval, which in this case is 7 minus 0, and we're going to divide it up by how many rectangles we have. So divide it up by n, which is going to give us 7 over n. Um, so then using this idea, we can figure out how we get to the next x value. So if we're starting at x uh, at 0, and x sub 0 equals 0, then x sub 1 is going to be 0 plus 7 over n. And then x sub 2 is going to be, we're going to add 7 over n again, giving us 0 plus 7. 2 times 7 over n, which means if we're trying to get all the way to x sub i minus 1, this is going to be 0 plus i minus 1 times 7 over n. Because remember, this is our leftmost uh, spot for this rectangle. So um, x sub i minus 1 is going to be 0 plus i minus 1 times 7 over n, or just um, i minus 1 times 7 over n. So now we can put this back into our limit. So we'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equal 1 to n of f of x sub i minus 1 is now i minus 1 times 7 over n times delta x, which is 7 over n. Well, if we put this i minus 1 times 7 over n into the function, which is 10x to the fourth, then we will have the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of i equal to 1 to n of 10 times 
this i minus 1 times 7 over n to the fourth times 7 over n. Well, I can distribute that fourth power through. So I'll have the summation as i equals 1 to n of 10 times i minus 1 to the fourth times 7 to the fourth over n to the fourth times 7 over n. And I can pull anything that doesn't have an i associated with it in front of the um, Riemann sum, giving us the limit as n approaches infinity of 10 times. I've got a 7 to the 5th power here, since I've got a 7 to the 4th and a 7 to the 1st. So this would be a 7 to the 5th. And same thing with the n's. I have an n to the 5th. And then left over inside the summation is this i minus 1 to the 4th. And that's our answer.